You want to answer that? Go ahead. Well, I've been doing. I've been raising shorehorn since I was 12 years old, and I I started in the shorehorn business because I liked the color of shorehorns. That's why I started with shorehorns. But as I got into it, I realized there's a lot there's a lot of really good things in the shorehorn breed that ha that they have to offer. And I raise them particularly because I love them. I love the shorthorn breed. I raise shorthorns because Steve raises shorthorns. And um, my background, I come from the Angus breed. My family is a, um, a well-known uh, major Angus breeder in the United States. Um, when uh, we first met and um, then were headed to be married, you know, I kind of made, the, I took the pledge and I said, I want to learn about shorthorns. I want to, uh, to uh, work with shorthorns. I want to give what I can to the breed to improve them. And I think um, it's a lifelong endeavor for us. Uh, we, we both believe in the breed. We believe the breed, my study of the history of the breed, for, shorthorns were first in America. They were the first breed to come to this country to have improved livestock. They were the first breed to start a breed association in this country. And you know, shorthorns um, over the years, over generations of breeders, um, they still have the things that, that made them great. Uh, we have to rediscover those. We have to unlearn some of the things that we uh, believe about shorthorns of what they can do and what they can't do. Um, our current leadership on our board and our staff are really taking us that way. Shorthorns are fertile cattle, they're maternal cattle, they can grade, they are tender. And those are the things that the consumer is looking for these days. And I think Steve and I both believe that we have to get back to that. And uh, we've really committed our lives to being part of, of the future of shorthorns. And we, and we both are very much into the history of the breed. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of benefits to the shorthorn cow. Number one would be docility. Number two would be milking ability. And uh, I think the third and most important thing is the, the shorthorn cow is a cow that everybody looks at and can identify the shorthorn cow. True. Biggest improvement. I, I think um, in our breed, um, our association services, um, not only the digital beef system, but the customer service that is exists at the Shorthorn Association. And again, I'm an Angus breeder. I've also owned Hereford cattle. They are excellent. Shorthorn's better. The, you, you can make a call to the Shorthorn Association. The person that answers the phone, no matter what their role is, they can help you and they're willing to help you and everybody's cross-trained they're they they're, they are oriented toward they know what your time is worth they know what it takes to to get you on your way and get you moving the digital beast system is it is a wealth of information about each animal our shorehorn breed um, needs data we need data from every animal in the database and they've set up this uh, digital beast system to where it's really easy to do and i i think um, as we go toward the future, um, collecting data, making data important, uh, performance data, genomic data, everything we've got, it's all set up for us there to be able to, um, to use the system and realize that it's, uh, it might look a little daunting at first, it's far easier than you think, and there's a f help with it is a phone call. And I'd like to add to that, okay. getting to the shorthorn cattle themselves, is I would say the birth weight was one of the, our big st stigmas in the shorthorn breed for the last 10 years. A lot of people had had an issue with birth weight in, in shorthorns, and I think we've improved that and almost eliminated the birth weight problem in the shorthorn breed. You want to answer that one? Being from Angus background. Well, the, the question that we get um, is where's the data? You know, it's like Wendy's question, where's the beef? You know, these days the question is where's the data? And I, I believe that what, what we found culturally, there are people whose grandfather bred shorthorns or their great grandfather bred shorthorns, and they have an expectation because they've been over in the other breeds, commercial breeders, they've, they've bought Angus bulls, they've bought Hereford bulls, they've bought some of the other composite bulls, the data is there. And um, I think that to tell them we're working on it, I, I want to believe that. I want to know that every shorthorn breeder um, is beginning to understand that 
We have the cattle base, we have the genetic base, we were moving toward an incentive for it to collect genomic data, which genomic data will leapfrog us in the data world. It'll take us from, from the, a breed that, that is um, really limited in data to a breed that has data. So, and, and that's going to cost money. The breeders have to invest, they have to take ownership in the cattle they have and realize that we, we really do have a place at the table in this industry if, if we can create that data that's, that's believable, it's real, and it's relevant.